Just so you know, this show is about scary stuff. So don't say I didn't warn you guys. And remember, don't be scared. Episode 60 To Kill Again. War Baby here with another episode of Murderous Minors. The recent and past murders of members of prominent Memphis, Tennessee family, the Snowdens, seems like a tale too crazy to be true. March 25, 2020, brought a tragic final chapter to the life of Martha McKay and ended the life of a vicious killer, Travis Santay Lewis, at the famed Snowden House in Hughes, Arkansas. This story doesn't start on that date, however, and doesn't even start back in 1996, when Martha's mother and cousin were murdered on the grounds of the same property. 75-year-old Sally McKay, born Sarah Day Snowden, and her 52-year-old nephew, well-known blues guitarist Joseph Lee Baker Jr., were murdered on the grounds of what was once called Horseshoe Plantation, where the Snowden house sits on Horseshoe Lake. The Snowden family's presence on Horseshoe Lake dates back a century to when Robert Bogardus Snowden Jr. of Memphis, Tennessee, and his wife Grace Mountcastle of Knoxville married and settled down here after World War I. Bob and Grace had met in 1916 on a hayride, and their love seemed instant. After college, he enlisted and was a pilot during the war while Grace volunteered as a nurse. He had studied agriculture in college, so it seemed natural that he would want a big plot on which to start their family. His father had been Robert Brinkley Snowden, the accomplished Memphis real estate baron who built Ashler Hall, a Victorian-era-inspired mansion which resembles a castle. Built in 1896, the property remained in Snowden family hands until his wife died in 1957. It's since passed through the hands of several owners and underwent a lengthy restoration in 2019, now serving as an event space. R. Brinkley Snowden's father, Robert Bogardus Snowden, was known as the Colonel following his Civil War service under Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee. He was the very first Snowden to come to Memphis. His mother was Annie Overton Brinkley, and she and the Colonel raised their family at the stately Ansdale-on-Lamar mansion in eastern Memphis. It was gifted to them by Annie's father, Colonel Robert C. Brinkley, who named it in her honor, and it was even used briefly as a Civil War hospital. It is located in the Ansdale Snowden Historic District in Memphis, Tennessee. One can gather from even just this brief history that this family has had a far-reaching historical impact on the Mid-South region. Maintaining his love of flight since piloting during the war, Bob Snowden had flown over and saw what he knew was going to be his eventual homestead, and in 1919, Horseshoe Plantation came to life. The first incarnation of the now infamous Snowden house was completed in 1920. His parents had bought the land, built the home, and gifted it to the newlyweds as seems tradition dictated. The plantation ultimately thrived with 1,000 acres dedicated to producing high-grade cotton. Bob and Grace dabbled in multiple business and municipal projects along with philanthropic pursuits throughout the region, while at home raised their daughters, Sarah, known as Sally, Edith, known as Edie, and Dorothy, playfully known as Happy. Tenant farmers lived on their property around the lake, and about 30 homes for them were built and maintained by the Snowden family. The Snowden house underwent a grand reconception and renovation, which ended in 1948, resulting in the Louisiana-inspired colonial mansion, which still stands. 
After Bob and Grace passed away in the 1980s, daughter Sally managed the Horseshoe Plantation Corporation, which the daughters now controlled. The main house was leased out and spent many years as a bed and breakfast. Used as one of the sets for the 1994 film The Client, based on John Grisham's best-selling novel, the charming curved outdoor staircase makes it recognizable, though its surroundings were altered to fit the New Orleans setting of the book. Generations of families can recall dining or celebrating at this Memphis-area landmark. On August 12, 1996, Sally's nephew Joseph Lee Baker Jr., known as Lee, lost his Hughes, Arkansas home in a fire. A legendary Memphis blues and rock guitarist, the home contained decades' worth of priceless music memorabilia, such as his mentor's guitar and recordings of rare appearances at early music festivals. Lee's mother was Edith Snowden Dewey, sister of Sally, daughter of Bob and Grace. Personal journals and family photos were also lost in that fire, along with the rest of Lee Baker's possessions. In transition, Lee took up residence at one of those Snowden cottages out on Horseshoe Lake, where his 75-year-old Aunt Sally continued managing the property. He regularly helped her with tasks such as collecting rent from her tenants, which included the parents of then-16-year-old Travis Sante Lewis. It was he who attempted to rob Lee Baker's temporary abode on September 10, 1996, when he was apparently caught in the act by Lee and his Aunt Sally, who were in the home. The teen shot both of them and burned the house down with the pair inside. The murders stunned the area. The Snowden family influence is seen throughout the region in the names of streets, schools, and other landmarks. Travis Lewis pleaded guilty to his charges on April 7, 1998, before his trial began. He had been charged as an adult and received a sentence of 28 and a half years. Throughout the preparations for the proceedings, the Snowden family made it pretty well known that they didn't support capital punishment. Hey guys, since the last time we talked about Audible, it seems we've all gained a bit more time for listening. As stresses in our daily lives increase, make sure you're taking time for you, and you can do that so easily with Audible, the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. From bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, guided meditation, business and self-development, download the app for free and listen to whatever topic you want across all of your devices without losing your spot. At the moment, I've been revisiting my collection of audiobooks narrated by Kevin Pierce, whose old-timey style warms my heart and soothes my soul. There was simply no one better to narrate the iconic Jack Olson's Salt of the Earth and I, creation of a serial killer. So if you enjoy true crime novels as much as I do, check these out. Think those nostalgic old lemonade commercials from years ago and you'll get the idea. You just get so much with an Audible membership. Members enjoy one title per month, two Audible originals from a changing monthly selection, and access to their priceless daily news digests and guided meditations designed to keep you informed, then help you relax. Visit audible.com slash warbaby or text warbaby to 500-500 to get started with your free title today. That's audible.com slash warbaby or text W-A-R-B-A-B-Y to 500-500 and get ready to put those headphones in. Following the murders of her cousin and her mother, Martha McKay returned to the plantation to help Lee's mother with the property as she'd taken over management. The bed and breakfast lease was terminated and slight renovations were made at Snowden House. Martha moved on, but after restoring a home in Virginia City, Nevada, and several in Washington State, she decided what she really wanted to do was return her mother's childhood home to its former splendor. She went back to Horseshoe Lake in 2004 and purchased it outright from the family corporation. Breathtaking yet historically accurate design elements were added, but just as Martha was ready to introduce the mansion as the next hot destination event venue, the Great Recession hit in 2008. 
According to Memphis Magazine's 2012 spotlight piece on Martha by Michael Finger entitled Lady of the Lake, her plan at that point had been to sell it, and it was on the market for $1.2 million. Here she is talking to Michael Finger a bit about the home and her family. Well, I was born here at Horseshoe Lake and Martha McKay, and um, we lived here until I was about five, and my parents brought us to San Francisco where I grew up. But I spent all my summers here and love it here at Horseshoe Lake with my grandparents where we spent our summers. And um, over the years, they used to show us these old family films. And when I moved back here from San Francisco, I was in my early 20s, and I um, asked my grandfather about the films. And he just said, you can have them. You can have all of them. They're, they're down there in that closet over there. And okay, so I, there were like 30 cans of all of these vintage 16 millimeter films. Some were black and white, some were color, early color. And I'm, so over the next couple of years, I got our old projector and I, when I had time, I went through them and I ended up whittling it down to about three and a half hours worth of film. First of all, they were all taken by my great-grandmother, Sarah Day, who lived at Asher Hall in Memphis. And she shot with a 16 millimeter camera starting in 1927. So the films were in remarkably good condition and I preserved them, I did some editing and then I transferred them professionally to videotape and I kind of put them aside. Then years later, when I was in my 30s, I was studying at the University of Washington where I got my degree in the comparative history of ideas, which was an unusual kind of old um, school type well, it was like a return to a classic liberal arts education. But what was wonderful is that the director there really supported me in doing something that I wanted to do with my life that I was already interested in. So he gave me a vehicle for the university to support me in completing a project, which I did, which ended up um, in this thesis, which is called Four Generations of Southern Women, A Comparative Look. So the first one was my great-grandmother, Sarah Day Snowden, and she was reflected in her films. Uh, the next generation was my grandmother, Grace Mountcastle Snowden, and I did a series of video interviews of her back in the early 80s before she died. So I had her through the videos, and then my mother, I did audio tapes of where I interviewed her before she died, and then the writing of my own. So that's four generations, and someday I hope to be able to put these films on some kind of accessible place where you can look at them yourself. By 2015, Snowden House was being featured places such as WREG3's list of luxurious staycation ideas. Now we're going to go slightly further down the road into Horseshoe, the Horseshoe Lake area of Arkansas. Mm. From my house in Midtown, it's only a 40-minute drive. Okay. The Snowden House is there, the oldest residence on Horseshoe Lake. Okay. Absolutely gorgeous. Ooh, that is gorgeous. Originally built around 1920 by Bob and Grace Snowden. Is it a bed and breakfast? Well, it is, but I want you to think of it as a whole house bed and breakfast. So think of the big chill. Renovated in the 40s, you can see that gorgeous wrought iron mm -hmm. back porch which overlooks the lake, a very quiet corner of the lake, so old Cypress Street. Yeah, you take a whole group and rent the house. You're going to go group, right? But think of the possibilities. Of, again, you're on this quiet corner of the lake. Martha McKay, who's actually Bob and Grace's grand, one of the grandchildren, is offering historic home tours. So you could go on an afternoon of the second Saturday each month to tour the home. Fast forward to 2020, and Martha is an Airbnb super host in the listing for the Snowden House titled Historic Lakefront Mansion, 32 miles from Memphis, remains up, reading, quote, The oldest residence on the lake, this Louisiana-style home features wrought iron screened porch with sweeping views of the lake, great swimming and water sports right off the bank, and elegant southern living at its best. Built by one of the founding families of Memphis, this home combines the traditional style of Southern hospitality and elegant living with a love for the outdoors with each room featuring beautiful views of the lake and landscaped private grounds. 